All long distance runners share a common fear, getting hurt. We will do just about anything to avoid injury and of course to get faster. So when I heard that getting my gait analyzed might help on both fronts, I was all in. Michael Silverman, a physical therapist at Manhattan's Hospital for Special Surgery, has been analyzing the gaits and stride patterns of runners since 2008. Yes, we're just trying to get a sense of if he's an overstrider and how he strikes. Is, so is he striking on his heel, his midfoot, or his forefoot? <laughs> the analysis first tests strength and flexibility, which can help determine how a runner moves. Next comes a look at what happens to the legs when they perform squats and come off steps, movements that closely mimic the running motion. Then came the moment of truth. Silverman's team uses slow motion video and 3D analysis to study how a runner is moving through each stride. The idea is to help eliminate the unhealthy movements that tend to correlate with injuries. You see sometimes an increased rate of injuries when those people strike out in front of their body, so they land on their heels. It puts a lot of force through their leg, it almost feels like they're hitting the brakes with every single step. So there's an increased incidence of stress fractures and things of that nature. Taking a look here, looks as if he's landing a little bit further in front of his body. On his heel, he's like a, kind of like a hybrid of a heel and midfoot striker. His initial contact is made on his heel and slightly in front of his body. Ideally, you would want his line to be closer to his ear. Those weren't the only problems. It turns out I bounce far more than I need to. During an efficient stride, runners only rise five to seven centimeters. Matt is moving 13 centimeters up and down. This is causing him to lose a lot of energy as he's running. So he's very inefficient and it's also increasing his risk for injury because he's coming down harder with each step. The news wasn't all bad. Silverman says when it comes to the feet, I'm getting this part right, landing on the outside of my foot and rotating in. He starts to pronate his foot, which is excellent. You do want a little bit of pronation in your running. And then what he does is he starts to resupinate the foot. So it's allowing him to push off his leg. And this is ideal running mechanics. Since that part of my running mechanics didn't need changing, Silverman then took a look to see if weakness in my glutes and hips was affecting my knees. It wasn't. You want this line as close to 180 degrees as possible. You're, you're just under 180, so that's that's perfect. But there was plenty of room for improvement. I have to stop bouncing. All that extra impact increases my risk for injury. I asked Silverman about other common injuries among runners. So what causes the runner's knee most often? More often than not, it's being weak in your glutes as well as your quadriceps and poor flexibility in your lower extremities. That lack of flexibility and strength can cause a runner's legs to collapse in or out unable to handle the impact of striking the ground, and the poor form can cause hip injuries like bursitis or hamstring pain. The knee going in is more a, think of it more of a symptom of being weak in the hips. Mm -hmm. And it's just that constant control, like the hip trying to fire and just not having the strength causes that inflammation in the side of the hip. The good news though, is that none of this is inevitable. Good function will usually follow good form, allowing for a lot more years of good running.